Well, we're keeping a close eye on our ag commodity trade. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to these ag commodities. And, well, the tour had a bearish turn today in the grains. My goodness, what a week it has been. It's a short trading week, but it's been a disastrous one for the bulls in the grains. Let's take a look at what corn is doing right now. Our quotes are provided by Bar Chart. And so far on the uh, corn, well, let's uh, first I want to take a look at the outside uh, markets here, too. I had uh, forgot to do that last half hour. Um, the September Dow futures now up 158 points, just so you know, at 30,629. Did want to touch on the dollar value. Uh, we're up 229 points on the September futures there. And on the crude oil market, I know all kinds of folks have been uh, wondering about that. August down 72 cents on the West Texas crude. We're now at 105.47 per barrel. And uh, gosh, it wasn't very long ago. We were up around, uh, what, 112, 113, something like that. Anyway, one has to wonder if that is putting any pressure on the corn. Well, I don't know if it needs any help to the downside. July corn, uh, keep in mind the July options expire tomorrow. Uh, July corn down 18 and a half cents right now. September down 31 and a half. And December down 33 and three quarters at 660 per bushel. You heard correctly, a third of a dollar lower just today. In the soybean trade, try this on for size. July down 55 cents at 1597 and three quarters. August down 53 cents. November down 55 cents at 1422 and a quarter. Make it 54 and a quarter lower now. Well, let's see what's going on in wheat. Uh, in Chicago wheat, we have July down 20 and three quarters. September down 21 cents. And it's at 967 and three quarters in the September contract. On Kansas City, July, we're down 26 and a quarter. September down 25 and three quarters. We're now at 1020 per bushel. In the spring wheat market today, you have July down 16. September is dropping by 18 cents. It's at 1087 and three quarters. And uh, we have October cotton down 497. That active December down 362 at 104.45 per pound. No matter where you look, you can't find a plus sign to speak of today in the grains. And Ted Seifert is here to join us. He's with Zaner Ag Hedge. Wow, what a risk off day in the grain sector. What is going on? Uh, yeah, you know, risk off. Uh, let's talk about inflation, right? I mean, something that we've been kind of really pounding into the ground here for the last few months with the amount of wealth destruction that we've seen in outside markets, stock markets, cryptocurrency. Uh, you've taken a lot of money out of money supply. You knew that was going to have a deflationary effect at some point. The one missing catalyst there was raising interest rates. So we've seen that. Uh, you had grains kind of propped up last week because we had a weather concern. But that concern kind of faded a little bit over the three-day holiday weekend. And now you have this carnage. This is what happens after three-day holiday weekends when you have less of a weather concern. Uh, on top of a inflationary bubble burst is is sort of... I don't know if we're seeing that in earnest or if this is the precursor to that sort of thing, but look at the markets. Uh, we're really coming down very hard. And it's all been led by soybean oil. I mean, that was the canary in the coal mine. It's been happening for a little while, but tremendous losses in soybean oil. Now you're seeing the other markets kind of follow through on that. You look at the Chinese Dalian Exchange last night, down 6%, the largest drop that they've had since 2013. And that was based on their soybean meal stocks pretty much tripling over the course of the last three months. The market's very concerned that Chinese don't really need to buy any soybeans in the near term, which means maybe this old crop soybean balance sheet doesn't get much tighter. Now, I don't really think that is going to be the case. I think this is an overreaction by both the Chinese market and ours. You even wonder if these numbers coming out of China are accurate or not. For a while, we weren't getting any numbers. Now they're coming from a different agency because the original agency uh, got locked down uh, just, just out of the blue. So it's hard to tell from China. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if China were to start stepping in and buying here at some point. In the meantime, you've done some major chart damage to all of these markets trading now below the 100-day moving average for corn the first time since October of 21, for, no, for, for soybeans for the first time since December of 21. Um, so you have your funds getting out, running for the doors. It's been carnage. It is a carnage. It is a, a rather deep correction, and I'm not sure if it's done yet. But I will say, if the Chinese come in and buy, our old crop supplies, especially for soybeans, are tight enough that we might have to really pay attention to something like that. And I'm going to say, I don't think we're out of the woods on the weather yet either. Um, but as we've talked about, Marlon, weather and grain fundamentals, you know, we can have as bullish or maybe even a more bullish story than what we have today. 
and prices can still fall dramatically if this is in fact that inflationary bubble burst. All right. Because there's a large component of these pricing in these markets that is that inflationary bubble. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Ted, uh, sit tight. We're going to come back in a moment and look at our livestock prices here on a Thursday right after this. All right, so with the grain markets under a lot of pressure, the cattle market has kind of been holding its own. Let's take a look at live cattle right now and see what they're doing. Well, we have fallen to the dark side here on the live cattle where we have the uh, June contract going down seven cents, the August contract now down 40 cents, uh, now at 134.52. It was higher earlier this morning across the board, then it was only higher on the nearbys and it was weaker on the deferreds, and now we have gone lower across the board. But the deferreds are still showing the most weakness here. On the feeder cattle market, you have the August still up a buck and a quarter at 174.40, but it's uh, within about 50 cents of its low of the day. We're off our high by about $1.45. Now let's look at lean hogs, and so far today, you currently have the July down $1.35, August down 182. We're at 106.50. Uh, why all the pressure on the hog market today, Ted, do you know? I mean, that's a great question. You got to say livestock in general are pretty disappointing for feedstocks being down as much as they are today. You would think that should have a, a bullish headwinds for the live cattle as a whole. Feeder cattle in particular are well off their highs, even though positive on the day, but you really don't feel good about that. Um, hogs, again, technically we ran into overhead resistance. We started to have a correction. But the overall feeling in the market, it's you're hard pressed to find commodities really anywhere that are, are higher today. You know, there's there's a uh, an exodus kind of happening at the moment in commodities. And whether that continues or not is the real big question. It all goes back to what we were talking about in the last segment with the grains. Yeah, even in the uh, crude oil trade, the West Texas Intermediate Crude on the uh, August contract here, uh, it's down a dollar fifteen right now at 105.04. And you can tell the uh, the peak that we put in that market here just a few days ago. Uh, Ted, thanks for all the explanations here on the market activity today. I appreciate it a lot. It's a very active day, kind of hard to keep up with everything. So thanks for the help. Ted Seifert of Zener Ag Hedge. He's located in Chicago. Janet, I'll turn it back to you.